All right, looks like we're going to be back at it again with some more best spells. What school are we looking at this time? All right, best spells times two. We're going to be doing Evocation. I'll clarify, we're only looking at wizard spells, so we're going to go through the Evocation school, and we're going to pick out our best five spells. They might not be the most powerful. Some of them might be, uh, but we're looking for spells that go boom. Supposedly like boom, and you know, basically, you're gonna do the five you like. I'm gonna do the five that I like. Like you said, it might be more of our preferences than you know whether they're statistically the best. I'm Nerdarkist Ted, and I'm Nerdarkist Dave. Welcome, Welcome to, to Nerdarchy. Nerdarchy. Four, Four nerds, nerds by nerds. nerds. Now, for me, I I went with some things that are more iconic. Usually, I like to look at what's the most impactful, uh, and as you may or may not be aware, I've got a I've got a kid. He's very much into D and D. His first uh, first character was a, a sorcerer. Absolutely loved it, and he loves the meme of I don't I, I didn't ask how big the room was. I said I cast fireball. So that was absolutely the first thing I had to put on my list. Fireball is an awesome spell. It does a crap ton of damage. It's area effect. It's iconic. It's iconic. It's one of the spells when the creators talked about creating spells where they're like, mm, we're not worried about bounce so much. It's fireball. <laughs> so absolutely for that reason, had had to pick it. I really feel that you know, like you could put lightning bolt into this, uh, you know, caveat. But I think most people are picking fireball over lightning bolt because of that iconicness. And for that, that had to be my number one. So my number two is going to be magic missile for almost everything it is the best first level spell in the game for a wizard hands down it automatically hits there's no attack rolls there's no saving throws you just go pew 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 and put out the damage it does force damage and most things are are not immune or resistant to force damage indeed the next one i had to, i had to pick one that i feel is probably less powerful but this is my favorite spell. It's, you know, it's been that way for, you know, many editions of the game. And that's going to be Melf's Acid Arrow. And this one has gone through some changes. Like, you know, visually, I feel like in earlier editions, like you actually f looked like you fired it out of a bow. Uh, so like you could have that elven wizard who was doing kind of like arrow magic. And I felt that one fit. You cast the spell. If it hits, you do extra damage on the next turn. I don't know why I love this one so much, but Acid is one of those damage slips that's a little bit more rare, so I tend to like it. And for that reason, that's why I put number three. Yeah, I couldn't remember um, if it still had the sustain effect or not, but like in, in previous editions, it would hang around for a bit. Yeah. So the next one I decided to go with, you know, one of those things that has impacted my games a little bit more often, and that's going to be Fire Shield. Uh, the fact that you can cast a spell and either gain fire or cold resistance is really awesome, and then be able to dump that damage, you know, uh, onto an enemy that hits you. It's really cool, and it's a nice defensive evocation spell, and, and for that, had to make my list. Also, it does not require concentration. It's one of the few. Uh, if you're playing a Gish character that's going to be getting up close, close and personal in melee, I think it's a great spell. I would use it with Uthangar from time to oh, yeah. time. And, that, and that's one of the, the key iconic aspects of, you know, how it's impacted my games. Of like, every time I'd swing at you, I was probably, you know, you know hitting a decent amount. But every time I did, I was taking damage. And then for my last one, I'm, I'm crossing all, all aspects. You know, iconic spells, favorite spells, impactful spells. And now we're just going to talk about sheer damage. And I don't think there's much in the game that can beat a spell like Meteor Swarm. It's huge. It covers a, a massive area and just does a crap ton of damage. So... Even though there's not a whole lot of Meteor Swarm being cast in my games, I felt it was necessary to talk about how great that spell is. It's like casting four fireballs at the same time, but they're on steroids. <laughs> Super steroids. You know, the great part about it, it, it's doing both bludgeoning damage and fire damage uh, as you're just impacting all of these things. Now, I feel like it's kind of been nerfed that you can't overlap your, mm. your three circles doing a obnoxious amount of damage to one target. I think it's four circles. Four circles, yep. Uh, so you can't completely cover... But, you know, I understand them trying to be like, all right, we're not going to allow you to just obliterate one square to just, you know, dust. But, you know, a town. <laughs> you can do that. Absolutely. <laughs> That's a good list. It's a good list. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking at similar things with things that I've used in the past, things that are, I think, are iconic, and then things 
uh, that are just kind of super useful. Um, and my first one is Shocking Grasp. Iconic from the very beginning of the game. It's only a cantrip to use it, so you can use it whenever you want. Um, the bad thing is you have to be up and close and personal to use it. The good thing is if you are up close and personal and you don't want to be, you can shock and grasp your opponent and they lose their reaction if you hit them. So you can get away, and that's why I like it. And that's why I think as a low-level get and you want to get out of dodge with uh, low expenditure of resources and also doing some damage, I think it's a good spell. Yeah, that is, that is certainly a good one. Uh, I feel like as a wizard, I'm always hesitant to take those up and up and uh, personal spells. Uh, but you know, to have it as in your in your back pocket, I rarely use this, but when I need it, I need it. Yeah, uh, another great another great spell is uh, that's low level is chromatic orb. The, the hardest thing about Chromatic Orb is having that 100 gold piece diamond so you can keep casting it. Yep. But you only need it once, it's not so bad. It does a decent amount of damage. It's an attack roll, which means because it's an attack roll, you can crit. Uh, and you can change the type of damage you do every time you use it, which is super useful because, you know, where, you know, Magic Missile always hits, no saving throw. No attack rolls. It's nice, but what happens if you're fighting a monster that's immune to force damage? They do exist. It's nice to have something else in your pocket, and it also has a decent range. Indeed. So what's up next? Up next is Lehman's Tiny Hut. I feel like this gets used in games so often. It can be cast as a ritual, creates an, an invisible force field kind of around the party that lets them hide in it and take a rest without having to worry about being molested by monsters while they're trying to get a good night's sleep. You know, I, the, the one thing that I don't think gets talked about much with uh, with Liam's Tiny Hut, and I'm totally going to do a PSA on it, if you ever look at how much space that thing actually covers, and if you've tried to lay down adventurers inside a Liam's Tiny Hut, you got to get awful snuggly with your adventuring companions to, to do that. It's not like you've got this huge area where you're setting up a camp and a fire, and no, you're, you're getting snuggly close with your, with your companions who have adventures all day, probably stink of, you know, blood, sweat, and whatever else. And you're going to be cramped in this thing that, you know, things don't get out of. So you're saying maybe a con save? <laughs> so just saying, take into an account, you know, dungeon masters and players. Like, do you have some aroma candles? Do you have something to kind of help things out? Yeah. Uh, well, next up, I have a spell that, again, I feel like it covers a lot of the bases. It can do damage. It can be defensive. And it's iconic. Bigby's Bigby's hand. It used to be a bunch of different spells. They've combined it now that you have one hand where it can interpose, it can crush, it can push, can uh, grasp. Yeah, you know, that's the crush. Oh, okay. but yeah, but so it's got you know it's got different uses and it's like iconic. You know, talk to the hand. B Bigby's hand is is an awesome spell. I really hemmed and hauled on whether or not I was going to put it on my list. Uh, you know, just because it's it's. It's useful in so many different ways. Uh, I just I couldn't push anything else off my list, so I think Bigby's would have been my number six. Oh, uh, nice. Uh, so my final is Contingency, and it's just like, do you want to cast a spell for free at some point in the next ten days? <laughs> uh, contingency is a good way to do that, uh, and you know it is it is one of the few ways where you can break the rule of casting more than one spell at a time. There's not many ways to do it in the game, and contingency is it. It takes a long time to cast, but it lasts for 10 days. And, like, you can use it as, a, you know, an, an oh crap kind of thing. It's like, if I drop to zero, this happens. Or, you know, because it's always a contingency. If I cast this spell, then I also cast this other spell. Mm -hmm. So, like... You could totally be like an Evo wizard of like, okay, contingency, we're going to get into a big fight, you know, coming up. If I cast Fireball, I'm going to cast Fireball. So you just double up. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's a great use, but it is a use that you could do <laughs> uh, for sure. And also there are certain rules, so you might not be able to cast that particular right. spell. Well, I, I don't remember that one off the top of my head, but I know that players have gotten very creative with how they use that. And it's like, all right, when you know that you're going into a big fight, you know, yeah. to have something set up of like, all right, when this happens, I I'm I'm ready for it. Or you can do things like if I'm grappled, uh, you know, I automatically cast um, Misty Step or Freedom of Movement or mm -hmm. something, you know, something or Gaseous Form or something else, right, in right. order to help you get out of dodge. Yeah, there's pl plenty of intelligent 
aspects, and that's one of the things that really plays into the intelligence of the wizard, because it can be like, hmm, what are my options here? And if you know what kind of thing you're going to be up against, you can plan to, well, I'm going to do this. And it's also a great spell to give to your big bads, uh, because you mean like, you know, it's just another action that they can take and can, you can have happen and surprise the party with. Absolutely. I will say it, it, the evocation school was harder and easier than a lot of the other schools because there's just so many choices. There's so many great spells. It, it was one of those instances where I think we could each pick five of the spells that we really, really liked without even overlapping. With some of the other schools, there's definitely going to be overlap and right. buying where like some of your choices, I'm like, yeah, that's an amazing choice, but I have so many other amazing choices. Right. And, you know, and I also, it's like, I like to try and like get through the different tiers of play sure. when we're when we're picking our top five. And, and I like to look at that as well, which is one of the reasons why I put Meteor Swarm on the list to have something in that, you know, that upper echelon. Uh, I think that's also why you put Contingency. Uh, but it, it's, it's one of those things I would really... I would I would lay money down that evocation is probably the most popular of the schools of magic. You know, maybe not so much as the subclass that's being played, but more people are putting evocation spells on their spell list because they are the spells that go boom. And a large portion of the game is combat, and evocation is going to be the best at combat. Uh, that is accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you like this video, others like it, as well as all the great content you can find over on Nerdarchy, why not come check us out over on Patreon and throw us some support over there. Articles like Study Up on 5e D&D &D Magic Evocation Spells. But hey, you're looking for another way that you want to help out Nerdarchy? Why not come check out Nerdarchy the store and get some products like the Vargarian Collect 5th Edition Adventure for 4 to 6 characters of 5th or 10th level. The Vargarian Collective blends sci-fi with fantasy for 5th edition. An unusual visitor to the hero's world needs help, but it puts adventurers at odds with the Vargarians. Cybernetic invaders from another dimension. Can the party find what they need at the Vargarian outpost in their world and escape without being assimilated into the Collective? Comes with a new player character race, the Vargarian. Four new magic items, including Vargarian prosthetics. Ten new creatures, including Cycle 3, a Vargarian NPC, and the Steel Glade Adventure for four to six characters of 5th through 10th level. So let us know what you think. What are your five top evocation spells, the ones that are always on your wizard spell list? If you want to help out Nerdarchy, appease that YouTube algorithm, go ahead and like, share, subscribe, click on that notification bell. You know you want to. Quick reminder, we drop new videos on here here on the channel several times a week, so come on back, but you can't wait, wait till then. No worries. We've got our top five spells times two for enchantment spells up here. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.